Welcome to Coffee Talk with Catherine Woo-hoo. Tabor and Kid Cadet. How Good morning. You? Good morning. You have your coffee. You're ready to go. It's Kit and Cat. Kit and Cat. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> it does sound like a Nickelodeon show, I think it? we should pitch this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Once this goes on YouTube, please do not steal our ideas. We are copywriting this immediately yes. after this panel. We just well, need a writer. We need a writer. Anyone yes. available? Anybody? No? <laughs> All right, we'll do it ourselves. Well, good morning. Good morning. So how has your Animate Weekend been so far? It has been really fun, but I have to be honest, also very tiring. Yeah. Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun, lots of stuff going on. And as I was saying before we started, I'm on West Coast time still, even though we're on the East Coast. So even though it's not early, that's why it's coffee talk today. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's like four in the morning. Well, I guess it's not that early, because yeah. they don't know what time we're recording, recording right, this. It's four so in the morning. It is the middle of the night, and... <laughs> For all you know. We came here to do this for you guys. <laughs> is this your first time here at Animate? It is my first time at Animate, but it's definitely not my first time in Florida um, doing a con, actually. And I do not do very many. Um, I just am, like, super busy, and I hate to leave my dog and all this other stuff. So I don't do a lot of them. And ironically, every time I do, it ends up being in Florida, which is Ooh. really nice because the people are so sweet. It's We really are. Just the humidity. It's true. Oh, my gosh. The humidity is <laughs> the worst. But I'm from Georgia originally. Oh, okay. So I'm a little bit used to it. So my skin is actually always like, oh, that's you nice. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. But the hair, you know, it's like hard to keep the hair like from getting really big. Right. And this is why I wear wigs like all the time. Well, not all the time, but especially to these conventions when I can get away with it. And, you know. This is so pretty. Thank you so much. I think I have to go actually figure out where you got this afterwards. And Elegant Beauty Supply. There you go. There's, there's where it is, but there's lots downstairs. Have you Our gotten... sponsor is Elegant Beauty Supply. <laughs> Please sponsor us. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a big shot, guys. This is the reveal of the hour. Um, but I'm sure downstairs at, at Anime, you know, we have lots of awesome vendors with yeah. lots of wigs. You could get away without saying it's a wig. It looks really... This is very real. Yeah, it looks this real. This is genetic, as I like to tell people. There you go. Yes. My, my father is a Muppet, and my mother is a human. So... I was well, going to say a mermaid. Oh, that'd be fun too. Yes, yes. I like mermaids. <laughs> Have you ever gotten to voice some mer- for a mermaid before? I'm thinking. I- I don't remember doing an actual mermaid, no. No, not yet. No, my nieces love mermaids, so that would probably be the coolest thing I had ever done if that happened. Well, but you get to do Star Wars The Clone Wars, which some yes. people would debate is probably the coolest thing, so... Yes. No, that was really cool, and my little nieces actually love Star Wars too, so that's that's really cool. I'm obsessed. Oh, like, yeah? I have... Well, I have the Death Star here. I have nice. like four Star Wars tattoos. So nice. when they told me I got to do this panel, it was, you know, I fangirled a bit. But uh, tell me about your experience getting to do the Clone Wars as Padme. Well, I was actually pretty new to voiceover still at that point. My, my very first voiceover job was actually a Star Wars job for a game called Knights of the Old Republic. Mm which um, was very cool for me because I was a Star Wars fan too. I mean, still am a Star Wars fan. Um, But so by the time that they were doing Clone Wars, I was still really new and the casting people just didn't know who I was at this point and my agent had to fight to get me in and call her. I think she said she had to call three times and say, um, you know, you have to see her, she is Padme. So I ended up getting the audition and then didn't hear anything for a while and I knew they were doing callbacks so I was like, oh, and uh, and then I got a call and found out I booked it, and I found out like that I was one of the few characters that didn't even have callbacks. Um, I just had gotten it, and the director, our director Dave Filoni, who was amazing, said when they had heard me just because I added Annie to a couple of lines um, that they were done. So I was like, yay! And that's probably like you said, super unheard of to just not even have a callback, just to go from yeah. audition to getting the role. For a role like that, definitely. I know um, that a lot of the other roles went through multiple callbacks. And actually, for the role of Ahsoka, I- Ashley actually came in originally to read for Padme, and they were like, ah, oh, no, she's not right for that. But then um, her energy and everything was what they were looking for Ahsoka. And I know, for instance, with that character, trying to figure out what she was going to sound like and. Um, I think at first she had some accent, and so some of that stuff, sometimes it's not even that they haven't decided on the actor, it's that they are trying to flesh out the character. Since Padme already existed, you know, I think it was pretty clear, like my agent was was right, I guess, that I was a good fit for Padme. (laughs) Did you have to do any, like, preliminary research before you did go and audition for the role? Well, being a huge Star Wars fan, I had already seen the movies, like, a million times. But I also, you know, I also did 
the the Star Wars database online is really cool to just get background information. So it's kind of fun as an actor to be able to go a place and actually read about her history and the fact that she was she was basically like you know. Uh, kind of like on the mock UN when she was growing up, like the Star Wars version of it. You know, she was in the like Junior Senate and all this cool stuff that you can, you can find out about stuff and add that to who that person is. And you know, because obviously she's in the films, but we explored uh, a lot more of her life and her personality than you get to see. So, got to do some fun work. I bet. And like you mentioned this database. I mean, it is like... It's huge. It's, a, it's, it's amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. Have you ever gotten a chance to go through... I believe it's called Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. Wikipedia. I can get lost in that website oh, yeah. all day. Yeah, and when I do, you know, any other uh, Star Wars roles and games and whatnot, too, particularly if they're a uh, different race or from a different planet, I always, if I can go find as much information as possible because it's kind of fun. I bet. It's fun to be an actor, so like, yeah. I like to do the research. Of course, and we were talking before also how we, I'm not sure if the camera can pick up this poster that we have for Anime Florida, but you're on here multiple times. I'm on there twice, You're actually. on here twice, yes. which is kind of impressive. So do you want to tell us about your other character? So my other character that's out there, she's in the corner. I don't know if you guys can see it, but... The hot blonde in the corner. Yes, her name is Lori Loud, and... Um, that's a show that I currently have. It's actually right now the number one kids animated show. We've even beat SpongeBob. Take that, um, SpongeBob. But we're, we're, we're on Nickelodeon, so we're friends with SpongeBob. And also, a little inside is uh, the woman, Jill, who plays our mother. The mother of, it's about, it's about 10 sisters and a brother. Um, Jill is actually the real wife of SpongeBob. So, <laughs> okay, okay. Jill yeah. Talley plays our mom, and she's actually Tom Kinney's wife. Well, so that's we fun. have a SpongeBob connection. That you do. Yes, and if you are working at Nickelodeon, you have to love SpongeBob. I mean, that's one of the cool things. When we were first starting to, when the show first started, you know, everybody like the first couple times you go there, you take your picture with SpongeBob out front. And my mom came and got to sit in on an episode, and you know, you do the obligatory. You stand there with the life-size, actually huge Spongebob, and you take your photo. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like if you're just a person in general, you have to love Spongebob. Yeah, just goals in life, take pictures next to that Spongebob. <laughs> Hashtag goals. Now, do you remember, this is maybe a little off the beaten path, like, because we're kind of by Orlando. Do you remember Nickelodeon Studios? Did you ever get a chance to go there before they... No, I didn't. I oh, wish that I did, so but I didn't. Fun. And I still like really want to get slimed someday. I got to try the slime. You did? I did. Someone said it was applesauce. It is applesauce. Did you actually eat it? I ate it. That is so funny. There's two different types. So <laughs> one of my friends was the host of Slime Time Live, and so I got to come to uh, see a live taping of that. So one of the slimes is fruit punch. It's like okay. the more gooey one, and then the other one is applesauce. Yes so funny. I still feel like because people are like, yeah, I ate it. And I was just like, I don't even know. If, even if someone said it was applesauce, I'm not sure I would feel like I wanted to I eat I can confirm that. Time. It was good. <laughs> and it was delicious. And I would, I would eat it again. Like, like going through all those tubes and everything else that it comes out of? I mean, they where they I had it just from the source. Oh, that is mine so is not right. tube you're not uh, slime. It off You're not secondhand after. slime. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, it's so good. Well, hopefully, eventually, we'll, we'll yes. get you slimed. Actually, right now, I'm gonna pull the string. And... I know that would be awesome. <laughs> if you do have sliming connections, because I don't think they're, you know, I don't think at the Nickelodeon I work at that there's a whole lot of sliming going on. Well, so. we should change that. I know. Who do we have to contact after we pitch our Nickelodeon show? <laughs> yes. Then once, once our show is a hit, once it's on the air and going, then we can afford our own slime. So, <laughs> do you guys have any questions? I know you guys came in a couple minutes after. Since you worked on Robot Chicken, is that correct? Yeah, um, I, uh, I, I actually, what's funny is I remember meeting Seth the first time. Um, we were at a Clone Wars premiere up in San Francisco for one of the seasons, and you know, I was just fans of, of his work in general and, and of Robot Chicken, and I met him that day. The first time I met him, I was like in a fancy dress, because we were going to be going out on the like red carpet, um, but it was in sort of our green room, so I also had curlers in my hair and tennis shoes on. So I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. Um, but at a certain point, uh, you just get to know that group and then you know you get lucky enough that they ask you to come be on Robot Chicken. Um, I did it a couple of times. Um, I think my favorite character was Gadget. Um, and if you haven't seen the clip, it's really funny. You have to watch it on YouTube. It's a little adult. Um, it's okay. Just a little. But if you do Robot Chicken Gadget, um, 
it's, I, I highly recommend it, it still makes me laugh. And then I ended up working with those guys. Um, so there's a show that's not out, and we, oh. don't, we don't know what's happening with it, um, called Star Wars Detours. Oh, okay. Ooh. That we did, uh, we did a couple seasons, and then when the sort of Disney Lucas purchase oh, yeah. shift thing. over thing happened, it's, uh, it, it kind of just got put aside for right now, and they Aww. say it's coming out at some point, but it's some of the m work I'm the most proud of, and it's comedic. It has, a, it has the sensibility of Seth and Matt, who do Robot Chicken, um, but it's all Star Wars, and it's really smart and funny and cool, and there's singing, and it's so, it's so, it's wacky, but not like, but in like the best possible way. So we keep hoping that it's gonna come out um, at some point. And I play Princess Leia. Oh, really? In, all, in that, as, oh, a, fun. as a somewhat bratty teenager, and she's got like a whole entourage of decoys. So it was very fun. Did you get to sing for that also? Or? I sing, I sing. <gasps> so we, I think we did like 22 episodes or something. And I, I sing somehow in at least three of the episodes. That's so fun. Yeah. In fact, Weird Al Yankovic. I don't oh, know if my you, gosh. do you know who that is? Uh, okay. Yes. I never know. Like, I know he's like an icon, but also like, I'm always like, are people too young to know? I don't know. So he came in one day and was like working on one of the singing tracks. And I remember him looking at me being like, are you trying to be this bad? No, I mean, he was, he was super nice, but I was like, you realize I'm not a good singer at all. No. But luckily for that character, it's kind of part of what we were doing, but it was, it was very funny. And I'm like, who, who, you know, you don't get to say that you got to sing in front of Weird Al. I love him. I, <laughs> I feel like Weird Al's like SpongeBob. Like everyone just has to yeah, like both Yeah, exactly, of them. exactly. Do you have a favorite like Weird Al song? Do you remember? No, I mean, I, I guess it would be, what's the one where he does the I'm bad, but like the- Bad, the, the fat. Oh, yes, 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 that's it, yes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I like Amish Paradise. I feel like that's like a classic, <laughs> like, white and nerdy is good. That's like the newer stuff. Like, We're talking classic, Al. Classic, Al. Oh, <laughs> Al, if you're watching this, you know. <laughs> so what made you get into voice acting in the first place? I, so I am, like I said, originally from Georgia, um, and I just wanted to be an actor. Uh, so I made the big, you know, hike across the country to LA and was just there, like, working a gazillion side jobs, like working at a boutique and all this other stuff. And um, I didn't know what voice acting was, which sounds weird to say because it's all around us. You know, it's, it's even, you know, like on the radio and you get in an elevator and somebody's talking and, but you don't, I didn't think about it. Um, and an agent just recommended me, you know, that, that I look into it. Um, I had a manager at the time who said, you know, you should really look into this because she's really well-spoken and I do accents and stuff. And um, so it was just like this weird fluke. And I pretty immediately started working. Um, my, my second uh, audition was for that Knights of the Old Republic game for, for Mission Veo. And I didn't realize that it was a big deal. Um, but then, you know, my agent, when I was going in, said, you know, you might not want to tell them that this is your first job. So I was like, oh, okay. And uh, I went in, and it ended up being such a great time. Uh, that director, his name is Dara O'Farrell, and I work with him still on another Star Wars game called The Old Republic. Um, but so I, you know, he and that agent at the time are sort of responsible for, you know, giving me this chance. And then I just started to work a lot. So it just went from there. Yeah, and I still do on-camera stuff. It's just that what I do voiceover-wise, you know, particularly when it's Star Wars or really cool shows like on Nickelodeon, it's just more interesting. You know, it'll be yeah. like, yeah, I did a co-star on Jane the Virgin last month, but it's not That's as interesting too. as saying, I'm Padme Amidala, the wife of Darth Vader. You know? <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, but Jane the Virgin, though. Yeah, no, I mean, it's fun, but like, you know, people like to sit in rooms and talk about Star Wars. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, we do. And on top of that, I'm sure with your voiceovers, you can probably go in like in like a onesie or something. Whereas if you're on set, you know, you have to go in hair and makeup and that takes all day. So it's funny because everybody always says that. And I suppose there are a few people who come kind of in their pajama type of gear, but that's just kind of who they are. Mm -hmm. and, and some of us, you know, some people do on camera too. Some people just strictly do voiceover. But I 
do not usually go with no hair and makeup. I kind of like hair and makeup a little bit anyway. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and it's funny because I'm one of these sort of dorky people who kind of dresses to suggest my character when I'm really? auditioning or working. That's awesome. yeah. yeah, that is cool. When I did Leia for The Force Unleashed, um, and I, so it's a young, like, teenage Leia, and uh, I was just going in even for my audition, and I knew they weren't even going to be there. It was going to be a remote auditioning, meaning that um, I'm just talking through headphones to someone somewhere else. I still did Leia buns. Really? Yes. <gasps> oh, I bet they look really cute. <laughs> I do like the Leia bun look. How I still do. I, <laughs> I don't do the big buns. Okay. So I call it like a modified Leia. It's not? a little more modern, you know. The updated, <laughs> yes. newer version. <laughs> what about for Padme? Like, do you do your makeup like that? Well, that, it, her hair is so elaborate. It, it's pretty crazy. That I can't really do. So I do like, I know we can't see it, but like kind of when she's in the battle scenes and she's got more of the like, just part it down the middle, maybe some braids. I do that kind of a thing. That's the whole do. like elaborate headdresses oh, where yeah. we're we're always like, is that hair or is that what is what it? Is it? Um, and she changes them so quickly. I'm like, if it's not, if it is hair, she's a really good hair person. Yes. Because th those hairdos we know would actually take like hours. Forever. So. <laughs> I would Forever like to know who's doing her hair. Yeah, exactly. It's like with some of the geishas, they would they would take hours. Yeah. Yeah, and so I think that uh, yeah, it would take it would take too much of my life to actually do to do like you know ceremonial Padme hair. Right, so. <laughs> this is true. Seeing that you're such a huge Star Wars fan, did you ever like play any of the Star Wars games, particularly the Knights of the Republic or anything like that? I definitely played Knights of the Old Republic, and one of the ways that I became like a big Star Wars fan, I wasn't such a fan when I was a, a little kid. I don't I don't really know what I was doing. I, I was reading Stephen King. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I had boyfriends and friends and stuff who were really into it and playing games and stuff. So that sort of helped to get me into it. And even now with the games that I'm in, like I'm in a game right now called Minecraft Story Mode, mm. which is really popular and it's an awesome game and I love it. But I don't have time to sit around and just play games all the time. Right. So I usually at least go to YouTube and watch someone else doing a playthrough. <laughs> and and I do it with the Old Republic too, because we like we just did more stuff for Vet uh, last week, so there'll be new stuff coming out. So I'll just periodically check and be like, who's got like a playthrough or a Vet scene where I can see my work, and you know. Have you gotten to play any of the games here this weekend? I haven't. We haven't had any time to do any of it, and I actually like just walked by and was like, video gaming room? What? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that exists. <laughs> oh, they're keeping you busy. That's good. Yes, yes. That's why we're here. So. Have you gotten to see anyone? cosplay as any of your characters this weekend? Um, I definitely saw, like, the, the cutest is always the little kids. Yes. So there was a little teeny yes. tiny um, queen Amidala. Yes, yesterday. I saw her yesterday. Oh, I mean, so she's teeny tiny, tiny. Like, four, maybe. Yes, like, and, like, teeny. immaculate hair and makeup, so good. Like, her mom, you know, Mommy must have done it. Did a good job. Yeah. yeah, and her sister was Ray, and her outfit was so cool that I was like, I kind of want that. Like, Ray's outfit's cool. Like, it is cool. I kind of want... Comfy. It's just awesome looking. It's got like that sort of Mad Max meets Star Wars meets, you know, I just want that outfit like to wear in my regular life. Yeah, me so too. So we'll see what's going to happen. And then there was actually the sweetest thing was, so for the, the new Nickelodeon show, um, The Loud House, there was a little girl who brought me, um, her name's Hennessy, and she brought me a drawing that she had done of my character Lori and the real life me, and we were, you know, like, looking at each other, and she was dressed as, um, there's a character named Ronnie Ann on the show who plays our little brother Lincoln's sister, and she was dressed as Ronnie Ann, and this is a relatively new show, so the fact that we, I've actually been just like so touched at the amount of fans of The Loud House this weekend, um, because you know, you hear the numbers like, oh, it's doing really, really well, it's like Game of Thrones numbers, and we're like, okay, you know, like, all that kind of stuff that as an actor, I'm like, I don't know what it means, but I know it's good, so that's awesome. <laughs> but then to have like the kids come up and actually, you know, just be like, I love Lori Loud so much. And to have this girl dressed uh, as the character of Ronnie Ann, I cannot wait to go back and tell all of my, their, all my sisters and brother on the show, like, they like us. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So if you were to cosplay as anybody, any yeah. character, what would you do? Um, well, I have the Padme outfit uh, because uh, I did. They gave it to 
I did a short film where I actually play like a live action Padme. It's called Hughes the Force. It's really a fun little crossover between um, like John Hughes movies um, and, okay. and Star Wars. So it's a cute, it's a cute thing. And James Arnold Taylor, who's our Clone Wars Obi-Wan, is in it too. So we play the live action versions of our characters. Um, but I also really, really love a character I did for Final Fantasy XII um, called Pinello. Uh, that's who my dog is named after. Your dog's named Pinello? Yeah. My dog is actually named Pinello Zisu Amadala Tabor. Um, oh. And Zisu, Zisu is from a, the, the movie The Life Aquatic. Um, I just am a big fan of that movie. I don't know why. It's Bill Murray. Um, yes. But I, so I would also do Pinello, um, cause she's just one of my favorite characters. And then that game uh, is being re-released this year. And now they're calling it the Zodiac Age and someone just sent me like the new trailer today. So I never really understand what happens when they re-release the games as far as what they're improving. Maybe you guys who do more gaming know more than I do, but I know they re-released yes. Knights of the Old Republic. Like, yeah, so what happens? Usually it's just graphics. It's just graphics. Usually, hopefully graphics they, add they add more content, but yeah. they'll, they'll speed up the processor, they'll make the controls more tight, they'll up the graphic output, they'll change the layouts and stuff like that, but hopefully they add like actual new content, like new side stories, or a gallery, or something like that. But, but visually, can you tell a difference? It depends. Yeah. I mean, it depends obviously when you're going from something still. from like PS1 or 64 and then you go to like Wii U or PS4 or something like that, you can totally tell. As an artist, I can tell pretty much all the time, even if it's just the previous console, because it's the amount of, uh, particularly the buff mapping, like all the little details and stuff like that, where you look at, like when they remade the thing of Halo, you can actually switch between the cool. two on oh, the fly. Oh, that's cool. And okay. you can totally see that's completely different. That's cool. Really cool. This sounds complicated. I take it as a so compliment though, like, you know, not personally necessarily, but being involved in projects, like they did it with the Old Republic. Um, I mean, not the Old Republic, the Knights of the Old Republic, and then that they're doing it with this game. It makes me think, well, you know, it means the game must have been good that they want to re, you know, put it out there for new people to play. So, yeah. well, well, to you, hear you. New York gaming system. Well, you before. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Okay, so you would cosplay as Amidala. Yes, or Pinello. Or Pinello. Yes. That's fun. Yeah. Dang. All right. Well, anything else you want to plug? Anything you want us to know? I mean, we're getting very personal here. Oh, questions. questions. Oh, yes, please. Questions. Questions. It's going to have a little coffee. Let's do it. It's, 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 it's not about that, but I always didn't ask everyone because it's always a complete 180 turn. Uh oh. If you could be on any game show, televised game show, whether it's American, UK, anyone else, which would it That's be a good and why? A game show? Yeah. Oh gosh. I don't really watch a lot of game shows. Are you like a Jeopardy, did Wheel you, of Fortune? Did you watch any when you were time. little? Like <laughs> Slime Time Live. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Slime Time Live. That's the show that I would be on. <laughs> I've always wanted to be on Jeopardy. Yeah? It's like, kind of one of my goals. Yeah, I, I don't know. It seems like a lot of work. And the, the <laughs> test is really hard. And they don't tell you how you do on it either. So I, I'm like a whiz, like at the kids' Jeopardy, like I would totally win that, but adult Jeopardy. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of, it's not, it's, I know, I'm kid cadet though, so technically. <laughs> it's not like a game show, but, and I it's probably shouldn't say this because then it's going to like be like, oh, that's crazy. But I kind of would want to do Naked and Afraid just because like, not because I want to be naked. Sorry. Me, that, but, that okay. to me. But I like the yeah. whole sort of survivalist, like, you know, what would happen if you didn't, you know, if you had to survive. It's what would you bring? I like. Well, I feel like the, ironically, you know, either some kind of a knife or the pot to boil water, like, ends up being this weird thing that if you don't have access to clean water, um, and anytime anyone brings, like, a fire implement, like a lighter, it always breaks. Right. So you have to know how to make fire, but then having something to boil the water in if you need to, you know. Pretty smart. But that's why, like, I love, like, things like The Walking Dead, and I love, you know, end-of-the-world scenarios, because I'm always looking around at my friends and being like, all right, <laughs> who's, who's going to be useful? <laughs> and, who, and who are we just leaving behind? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's a totally different topic. Any other questions? Oh, there we go. Okay, so how many Star Wars media have you been in? Have you been in Lego Star Wars also? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you make fun of your own voice? Or like, how does that work? Or is it just like... You know, when you do the Legos thing, I mean, you're just making like little sounds. Okay. And then it's, it's kind of funny. I was saying like right after we did it one of the times, it's like this weird challenge because it's like, what would little Padme 
you know, sound like kind of a thing. And you just, That's very cute. you just <laughs> do it. You're like, it's another, you know, so it's kind of like doing an alien language. You know, that you just. Oh yeah, no, I'm not on the show right now. Oh, okay. No, mm -hmm. no, oh no, games, Lego games. Oh, all right. Yes, yes. Well, that's awesome too. Yes, yeah. Speaking of games, how was that Avatar game? Uh, that was really fun. That was another one. Speaking of that, where we did uh, an actual language. Um, they already had the language built for. Oh gosh, what are those characters called? What are they? The Navi. Yeah. Yeah. Navi, yeah. So, and that's one of those things where you have an audition and someone's like, can you do this, you know, alien language? I think that's one of the things I'm kind of good at some, for some reason. I like Elvin, you know, from like the Lord of the Rings stuff and everything. So I'm always like, yeah, can I talk in a weird language? Sure. <laughs> you also said you're good with accents. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that helped a lot, like just doing, you know, being able to get different jobs and uh, not just in animation and games, but I do audiobooks and stuff. So, um, so it helps to be able to do some of those different things. It gives you a little edge over just the general group of people if you can do something extra. I hear those take forever, like an audiobook. Yeah, you work for you work for seven hours, whereas a normal voiceover job, the max they can keep you is four. So I always stand. Um, a lot of people sit when they're working. I always stand. Uh, except when I do audiobooks, because standing for seven hours would be really difficult. But they're fun and challenging, and you get to play characters that you would never play because you're reading the whole book. So you're playing the men, you know, all that stuff. And so it's been some of the coolest stuff I've done as an actor, too, and my parents love that. So, What's your favorite accent to do? Um, probably just being from the South, just to do a good old-fashioned southern accent because also when you're an actor every actor thinks that they can do British and southern and they can't so <laughs> my British is just Australian like yeah. I can't that's the cool thing about video games though because we do a lot of times what we call space British so it doesn't have to really sound like truly authentic because you're like it's not British it's just space British She's from Coruscant, you know, so. Space, I like that. Space, <laughs> I mean, that, could be, that could be another show. That's what I call it, Space British. I like it. Yes. You should, you should coin that, too. Unless <laughs> it's like a show like Italia, where they're pretty much just mocking the language, then, then you can, then a lot of people can do what they, they believe they can, but otherwise, yeah, yeah. it's not authentic. Yeah, and it's not, it's not always great. I feel bad, like, when I'm doing any characters that are mocking a language, or just that's bad. Like, I worked on... Spoiler alert, the Hannah Montana World Tour video game. Um, and I played like, you know, some, I think I played Australian, but I also played Japanese. And sometimes when you're doing those accents, you just feel like, I feel like I'm making fun of someone and I'm not trying to. You feel like you're butchering. Yes, yes, I'm like. Space Japanese, is it? Yes. And then, and then we call that when you're making fun of someone, we call it going to hell theater. Meaning that you're like really not being nice, so I feel like I'm doing going to hell theater when I'm doing a fake Japanese accent in the Hannah Montana game. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Montana, I love her too. I don't know. So, any more questions? Can you talk a little more about your experience with uh, working in Final Fantasy XII? Um, that again was like one of my one of my first jobs. I was really really new, and I just love that character so much. I. I sort of have been really blessed to play characters who are good, you know, inherently good characters. And a lot of times what would happen with those characters is they would just be one note and very annoying. Um, so I always try to bring something a little bit edgier and different and still keep them that, you know, positive, good character. Vet in The Old Republic is very much that way. Like, she's in a very dark world, but she's kind of you know, the ray of comedy and light. And sometimes those characters can get really annoying. And, uh, um, and I try to fight against that. And I think usually the response is pretty good that I'm, I'm succeeding and that they're, they're good, positive, you know, energetic characters, but people don't want to kill them too much. At least not most people. I know, you know, there are people out there who want to kill that or, or, you know, Pinello, but usually I get the opposite. And, and Mission Veo in Knights of the Old Republic, the pretty much darkest thing that would drive you to the darkest side would be to have her companion Zalbar, who's a Wookiee, kill her. Um, so people who did that to this day, 
big burly guys still come up to me and be like, I killed Mission and I feel really bad. <laughs> and I'm like, the fact that you feel bad means that you're not all dark. It's true. <laughs> you just want to get the dark side. Yes, yes. Oh. but they actually like feel bad. It's so funny. So I'm like, I did my job. Yeah, that means that they're like connected <laughs> to the character. Yes. They, yes. They're, they're mourning that, oh my gosh. It's like the ultimate compliment. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It is. it is. Any more cool questions? Go for it. Um, what body of work do you feel has brought out your greatest like potential, I guess? You know, I mean, playing characters like I said, where I feel like it's a challenge. You know, I think everyone likes the bad characters, and it's always like, oh, it would be so fun to play Darth Vader, you know? But to try to make the characters who are good and positive and like, you know, uh, sort of symbolize the things that mean something to me, like there being things worth fighting for and like being loyal to your friends and standing together against evil, to try to play those characters and still make them interesting, um, has been my, my biggest challenge as an actress, and I love doing that. And so characters like uh, Padme and like Pinello, um, I feel honored to get to play them and to be like, it can be fun to be good. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good positive message. Let's all be good. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> Any other questions? Can you do Pinello's voice? Oh. I mean, a lot of it is not too far for, from from mine, but she might just be like, um... Van, you're not supposed to steal. <laughs> that makes you just as bad as the bad people. I love, like, watching oh, people do their voices, that. too. Because a lot of times, like, when you're watching someone do one of their voices, like, your face completely changes. It's like you just go into character mode, and now, now you're back. Welcome yes. back. Yes, thank you. That's, That's so to be back. Fun. Yeah. It is fun. I mean, I don't have those, because, like I said, I'm an, I'm an actress. Um, I never considered myself a voice actress or a voice talent like some of the people I work with. Like, you know, like James Arnold Taylor, again, to bring up our, our Obi-Wan for Clone Wars. He does a whole one-man show where he does all these different voices, and it's just amazing. And then Dee Bradley Baker, who plays all of our clones, he does all these monster sound effects and, you know, everyone knows his famous cricket noise when, you know, you're just sitting in this room and there's a cricket and it sounds like it's in the corner, but it's coming from D and you're just like, how do you do that, you know? And I just do different characters, but I do change the physicality of myself and that's why I think, like, wearing different clothes, wearing shoes, you know, having different hair. Helps makes helps me get into character in a way that they That's don't need cool. to do. Like Dee can just sit in a chair and just do whatever, you yeah. know, and be amazing at it. Monster, monster sounds. But he actually does get physical too. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like to, I'd like to watch that too. I think you can probably find some some of Dee doing these crazy. Uh, when he does the uh, the Queen, um, the Geonosian. How do how do you say Geonosian? Geonosian. Geonosian Queen. Thank you. From Clone Wars. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> He changes. Oh, I'm making ugly faces now. I'm gonna stop doing that. Oh no, you still look beautiful. <laughs> Don't worry, you look great. Very, but very but thank you. But Dee does like these crazy. You know, turns into the whole. I'm a professional. <laughs> As I hit my microphone, um, you know, and, and changes, and you know, and, and then like I said, some people really just. Uh, Corey Burton uh, is an amazing voice actor. He sits in a chair, and the fact that all these different things come out of him just sitting in this chair is pretty pretty incredible to watch so so there's lots of different methods and whatever works best for you yes Just, yes you know, go for it but. absolutely any final questions I'm thinking anything you want us to know anything no, you need, just, that we need to know about you no oh god we already know too much <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for this tape thank you for coming and thank you for watching thank you so much and hopefully you've all enjoyed your coffee yes. and once again coffee Catherine stuff. Tabor thank you. Yay. thank you thank you